Yes, we can hear you loud and clearly. Good. I'm going to turn um, my camera a little bit and then I just have to, and to turn it up so that uh, uh, a little bit of network interrupt. Uh, uh, cool. I think uh, we are good to, to start, uh, to go on. Uh, in my uh, that means um, after my presentation, I think I will just uh, have a couple of comments or questions uh, that may be um, any member would, you know, uh, like to. Uh, Matthew, could, sorry, could I interrupt yes, you quickly? Please. Could you stop video yes. maybe? Because I think that'll improve uh, the connection. You know, we, we'd be able to hear you clearly. It's busy breaking up when you talk. Yeah, sure. I'm uh, actually trying to, to put the video off so that I can get a clear connection. I guess now uh, you guys can hear now well. Yes, all good. Good. Uh, well, um, for my name is uh, Mr. Remains uh, Matthew Lubari, um, founder and uh, away from uh, Rhino Kam refugee settlement in Uganda. I'm a refugee from South Sudan and I uh, came here to Uganda in uh, 2016 a war back home, political instability. Um, but then we got settled in Uganda and we were welcomed. Uh, has been so uh, quite home like a second home, a travel. I'll be able, you know, to experience and uh, what we have been doing. Uh, CCD stands for Community Creativity for uh, Development, youth-founded and uh, refugee-led initiative, um, founded back in 2019. Uh, by us, a kind of a mobile repair uh, initiative, not so big, and um, in um, 20, uh, then uh, we decided to to come a little bit a group out the repairs. Uh, as you can see, uh, in this uh, aerial photography, uh, this is the overview and uh, part of the rhino. It's, I took this photo uh, uh, an exhibition where we we had some repairs uh, in the settlement. Uh, this location is called uh, Ochia. And it's host about uh, 7,000 people in that uh, particular village. Uh, Rhino come in total uh, have up to uh, 120,000. These are not only from South Sudan, but um, including uh, Kong, DRC Congo. Uh, refugees from uh, Burundi, Rwanda, uh, Central Republic, including uh, you know Kenya, uh, 
but of course the biggest number of uh, the refugees are from South Sudan. Hopefully some flee from 2013 and uh, some from uh, uh, 2016. So um, just to, 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 to talk a little bit about uh, community creativity for development, um, like I said, is a huge lead uh, in I'm sorry, I lost connection, but I'm back. Yeah, we can hear you. Go for it. Good. Uh, so I was a point of saying, uh, uh, you know, um, of writing uh, initiative, which is actually to promote the use of writing and. Uh, and this is through the repair and the use of uh, electronics. Uh, we have a uh, in the settlement um, and, uh, the refugees you know, move along so about a sixth of the center uh, their devices and um, yeah, Smartphones, uh, including you know, uh, solar lights, so they quite move for for long this. Uh, so in order to you know to, to reduce that uh, challenge or the problem of distance, so we had to you know to look around and set up something small. And uh, we also uh, looked at uh, you know. Empowering the youths, you know, within uh, settlement, because we found out there are many youths that has been, you know, idle and had nothing to do. So others, you know, end up, you know, uh, abusing, like going to to drugs use, which is dangerous to their lives. So we thought of it wise and uh, kept. To sort out some of the issues around. Um, so uh, we are also, you know, our vision is, uh, of course, a transformed and committed society uh, that will be able to fully take control of the available uh, sources so that they can be resilient and, of course, reduce but but the reduction be living in a, a, a peaceful environment together with the, the hosting communities. So um, our areas of operations include uh, the empowerment, like we've been handling some trainings, digital skills or digital literacy training. Um, of course, that the environmental protection through the repair and uh, maintenance of the electronics and uh, physical coexistence and promotion. And this has been through uh, the repair cafes that we had been, uh, that we, we, we did uh, some couple of 
Tak ada um, And uh, these are some of the, you know, in these pictures, if uh, you guys are able to see, these are some of the uh, activities that we did uh, within the settlement, the training of the, the, the youth. We trained about uh, 15 uh, youths and uh, repair and maintenance because we we were a small team and we would like like to to have a bigger team to reach out to many people so we decided to invest to train uh, train you know some uh, youths and which includes refugee female and male youths uh, so we also did a couple of uh, Fair events and uh, this happened in a place called Eden where we repaired 150 electronics and in the repairs those include uh, radios, solar panels, uh, solar lights, bicycles, uh, in some cases generators that are uh, being brought by community members um, for fixing. So those are vulnerable people who are not able you know to to get money in order to fix things uh, among the initiatives that we also had uh, like in the trainings we managed to you know to to have a team that produces uh, wooden extensive cables just within the, the, the refugee settings uh, seen in picture, must picture, those are the samples of uh, the kind of um, wooden extension cables that we uh, produced within uh, the settlement. And, uh, you know, we, we, we try to, to prototype such just as a way of the environmental protection. And, uh, in the other pictures, as you see, uh, those three youth uh, painting a, a sound speaker that has also been uh, assembled, you know, and then we, after producing, we intend to, you know, to sell uh, such uh, a speaker, you know, to people who are in need and a speaker, a single speaker, sometimes, you know, uh, cost about a uh, hundred dollar or sometimes a hundred and fifty dollar, uh, but can be sold. And then we in turn use this money, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to sustain our activities. Uh, in the next pictures that you see also has been one of the repair cafe events. Uh, where the 15 youths that we trained uh, after completing one week training, we tend to organize uh, the repair cafe and to prove out the knowledge and skills that they have learned and put it you know, into use. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, how uh, uh, how things started, you know, uh, just wanted to talk about um, because mm -hmm. I uh, tend to be one of the beneficiary uh, of this event, I mean, of, of this initiative for the South World Foundation, um, nominated by nominated by all of the restart so um, after having a series of meetings with the Ugo and uh, seeing how they could help and then I was you know subject uh, to, to see a email uh, from Jason uh, about happiness when I felt so with happiness I felt three days you know I actually email into this just so the headlines and I was so excited because I knew um, uh, 
that nomination to receive the grants was going to change the lives of the community as well our initiative a little bit um and and thanks really um we were able you know to receive and uh, in these two pictures uh you know before the grant as we started things we were using that small table and uh, doing our mobile repairs uh, in that small tukul uh, and then after the grant, when we received it, um, of course we were able to uh, to have a small tool on your left hand on the right hand side that uh, I own seat uh, small room where we are currently using it as an office, but as well our repair space, and we were able to acquire some a few. Uh, equipments and tools that we are able to to use at our repair space uh, because uh, when we started things were not easy and uh, we were only having a few of the tools that you know we managed to run one screwdriver um, one brass and a cutter that we're able to manage but now after the grants of course we were able to, to buy quite some few tools that uh, able to use at the space uh, zero and to a, a medium you know uh, level that we are currently in Along the way, we had, you know, been uh, faced with a lot of challenges that uh, in work that we've been doing. Like I said, uh, the distance from one village to another, you know, it's quite uh, big. So our movement has not been all that uh, um, efficient or effective. Uh, the mobility had been, you know, quite challenging, but somewhere, somehow with the uh, that we received, we were able to uh, to cater or to you know to 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 pay for transport, you know, to move to a certain uh, far distance for us to you know to, to hold our repair cafes. And so far, we did uh, about uh, three repair cafes uh, since we received the grant, and uh, we are really planning to do more. Uh, of our activities uh, the human resource aspect you know the limited number of uh, staff uh, we are trying to uh, to train more of uh, the train our you know activities and reach out to, to more people but also we uh, were able to, to acquire some of the tools like the furniture, uh, but still uh, it has not been enough for us uh, in our operations. And then uh, in terms of uh, what we plan to do, like our next steps is actually to, in order to reach out to many people, we, uh, plan, you know, to establish more repair cafe, uh, repair cafe centers, so that we can reach more of the the community. Because we had been focusing more in one location that, that is so reachable, and then uh, we also uh, plan to. Uh, we look forward, you know, to 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 have a mobile uh, van, a van that we can use um, 
we can use, you know, to, to facilitate our movement and to do on-spot repairs within uh, the settlement. So uh, what, what has been so interesting, that's uh, as why I put that picture of the van, you know, uh, I look at uh, the Samsung vans and they had been so amazing and just love the way it looks and uh, its services being uh, uh, put, um, the capacity. So that's why I decided not to, to, to put out this um, a Samsung, uh, the Samsung van. Um, so uh, that's basically what we have been uh, up to in the refugee camp. And uh, we are really so thankful how these grants has really, really changed our, um, or transformed our initiative from zero to somewhere. So I really thank uh, uh, the management of the South Hall Foundation for uh, the great work that you guys are doing and not forgetting the restart uh, project uh, organization for recognizing uh, us uh, to receive, you know, uh, this kind of grant in order to, uh, to to carry out our our initiative. Uh, this time, I may not, you know, um, uh, talk so much. Uh, basically, that's what I would like to share. Uh, it's more of the excitement that uh, um, that have been true, you know, uh, as a result of this grant. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much. I at this time I would uh, I would um, love you know to to hear if if there are any comments or any questions that. Uh, um you guys would have wanted to would like me to answer or that you wanted to put forward uh it's highly welcomed i Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, that's really wonderful work you're doing. Um, so there's just a question in the chat uh, from Sue Lett. How long on average does a repair take? I know it will vary a lot. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get well. Okay, so the, the question is how long on average does a repair take? Um, the way we organize uh, the repair cafe uh, sessions is that uh, uh, we normally hold uh, for about like a day in one location. Sometimes we go like two days. But uh, when into fixing the devices, um, there are those devices that one might fix. Sometimes can take up to a 20 minutes, some uh, an hour depends on the nature of the challenges, uh, I mean, and the nature of the problem. But of course, there are those things that we are not able to, to fix or to repair immediately. Um, so we tend to take it back to our space and uh, fix it there. And when once done, we tend to not to, uh, to, to bring it back like to the owner of the of the device or of the equipment. And uh, in one of the challenges that we had been facing, um, there's the, this difference is uh, the challenge in acquiring, you know, um, spare parts has been a very big challenge to us, where uh, sometimes we have to, you know, to, uh, to travel for longer distance, you know, to, to find out uh, those uh, uh, 
spare parts and later on bring it back to uh, sometimes when you go to the town you join them and say we're still you know um uh ordering from uh, another you know city so in a challenge that we have also been uh, experienced mm -hmm. but on average uh, a device like minimal uh, faults you know takes up to sometimes 10 minutes sometimes 20 minutes to fix a device okay and just a, a follow-up question uh, related to that have you found it harder during COVID to get parts for repair due to supply chain issues uh, that's more, more than more than usual or uh, not really um yeah uh of course uh, uh covid 19 you know had had been so uh, impactful on our um initiatives uh like in 2020 uh in the beginning um where uh, there was, you know, uh, a lockdown in Uganda and uh, movement was uh, restricted totally, where we were not able, you know, to move from one location to another. The only thing that we had to do was to just uh, uh, do things at our own um, space there. Yeah, so. Uh, in terms of the COVID-19, it has really uh, impacted because of the restrictions in the movement. And also, you know, there was um, um, something which was passed out for organizations to only focus on life-saving activities. So that was, you know, a very huge challenge at that time. But... Uh, as for now, things has uh, normalized a little bit, and the uh, movement uh, restriction has been lifted. Almost uh, most of the restrictions which were put had been, you know, uh, lifted. So, um, uh, to those of you, um, I see some one asking about the link to to follow uh thanks chris for dropping the link uh you can check in those links on the facebook and as well um, on twitter being dropped on the chat <laughs> 